and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Gruul midrange. It's going to be our first deck that we're going to be playing today, of course, over in Ranked. Uh, this is the deck that I've actually been uh, that I've been winning the most with the last couple of days, and uh, playing this uh, today before stream had a lot of success. Um, well, I mean, I played three matches and, and won them all. Um, so, you know, I guess it's not, not a huge sample, but the deck's feeling pretty good. The thing that I really like about this deck right now, and what we changed up since the last time we played it, is I have three Veil of Summer and three Kral Harpooner in the sideboard to stop or, you know, help against the mono blue decks. Because the mono blue decks are kind of everywhere right now. Uh, I guess everybody with, with Esper um, kind of taking a back seat right now. Everybody's all about the uh, real cheap creatures and counter spells and that kind of stuff. Uh, we saw that whenever we were playing yesterday throughout our leagues, we played against a lot of either mono blue or blue green flash. Played against a lot of those kind of decks. So I really like Veil of Summer right now. You know, in a week that could change, but right now Veil of Summer is in an awesome spot, and so is Kral Harpooner. So I want both of those cards in our decks. We got those in our sideboard. Um, and besides that, we just have uh, a really nice curve. This deck's all about curving out. You know, we have our mana creatures to help us out, and you know, our our other creatures just very efficient threats along the curve, and then just really good planeswalkers: Domri, Vivian, Nissa, and Chandra. So you know, like we're just we're just backed up with with very good very good uh, creatures and very good planeswalkers. You know, it's nothing too fancy here. Um, Domri's Ambush has been a card that I have been in, in increasingly impressed with. The 1-1 one -one counter just actually does matter a whole lot. That's the thing that I undervalued with this card quite a bit. Forgot to grab water at the beginning of our stream here, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, like I, I basically always liked Thrash Threat more than Domri's Ambush. Um, since the ambush has been previewed because thrash is instant speed and then you also have the threat part of the card but i really did underrate that one one counter and it turns out the one one counter uh yeah just kind of helps you win games quickly and everything so yep this is our deck um let's go ahead and get to it so we're gonna go ahead and head on over to ranked where i'm not quite mythic yet hopefully we'll be mythic in the next couple of days But we're going to play five matches here, hoping to go 3-2. Three, 3-2 two. Three, two is what, what we'll definitely take there. I need to get a better spot for this, this mic. I'm sorry that if it's hurting you there, if it's, if it's annoying you uh, whenever I'm bumping this mic. It's not, it's not level. I need to switch this up on my, de my desk. No, no Ceratops. While Ceratops is also very good against Mono Blue, um, I feel like just the Veil of Summer and the Harpooners have got that covered. Because Ceratops is awesome against Blue, but that's that's kind of it for for uh, Ceratops. Anyway, what's up, Storm? Welcome. Okay, yeah, against control um, for the black white a Johnny deck. Do you have, do you have Gideon? Gideon's a really good card against control. There um, could also have the other a Johnny, the other four mana Johnny. They can they can bring threats back. No, not a 12-hour stream. Just a normal stream. Uh, we are... We've hit... Uh, that's rude. We've 
where are we at? I think we've hit 13 out of... Let me double check. I have it up on the in the info panel. Um, I think we've hit... Yep, we've hit 13 out of 20 sub goals to, to reach a 12-hour stream. So we're on our way there. I'm not going to attack with the Paradise Druid. So even though I'm not getting two points of damage in, I I want it to stay here with it being hexproof to make sure that we get to play the Chandra next turn. Wow, that's really disappointing. Definitely wanted to get that Chandra in there. Hey, Durlunger. Thank you so much. Santa Durlunger there, gifting out a sub. It's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Okay, well now we are going to be attacking. Oh, I shouldn't I shouldn't play the Llanowar Elf here. I should keep that in my hand because of uh, Dragon God. Or not Dragon God, but uh, Ravager. Because of Nickel Bolas, the Ravager. Sorry, I just kind of played that quickly. Alright, not punished at all. And Santa Durlunger gifts out another one to Vimiot. Keep those hype boats going. Thanks, Durlunger. Or Lugner. There we go, Lugner. Yeah, we were close to, to 50 subscribers yesterday, uh, Helix. But, so like each e each 10 is a sub goal. So we had we hit almost five sub goals yesterday. We have hit four of them and whenever we hit 20 total, uh, sp spread out between different days and everything, then the I'm doing a 12 hour stream. This is definitely a very spell-heavy Grixis deck. You know, seeing Sinister Sabotages. It's not something you see too often. And then, uh, of course, Chemister's Insight. I shall miss your company. Hey, glad you feel a lot better today, Storm. Yeah, thank you so much, dear Lugner. Alright, down to four. We'll see if we can either finish this out with the Phoenix, or if we can draw some other threat that finishes this out. Hey, what's up, Rocket? Yep, not drafting. Alright, so we know they have the Sinister Sabotage here. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense just to play the Phoenix, to be honest. We just played it into the Sabotage. We wait till they tap under three mana before we play it. Yeah, we got Counterspell Grixis, which is perfect for Veil of Summer. So we're going to play the Veil of Summers. We'll play the Daredevils. Um, as you can see here, I don't have a ton of cards against control on my sideboard. Because we're thinking our deck kind of overall is going to be okay. Maybe I don't play Domri's Ambush. We don't really see anything to ambush. They likely have Nickel Bolas, though. But we have the Daredevil that can get their removal spell. We have the Domri that can fight. We have the Vivian that can deal damage. 
We have the Chandra that can deal damage. We still so like taking out Dahmer's ambush doesn't mean that we don't have removal in our deck anymore. All right, now besides that, uh, one of the, like the the mana creatures. I either want to take out one of the mana creatures or the Hellkite. Hellkite's pretty easy to kill on its own. I mean, honestly, Cindervines may be just fine here, to be honest. Like, Cindervines could be a good card. There's there's certainly a chance that Cindervines is, is pretty good uh, with, with how many spells they're playing. Would I want to replace Paradise Druid? Or Llanowar Elf with Cinder Vines. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. No thought erasure. Zone. Honestly, should be tapping. Should be tapping the land or all for mana there and leaving up one of the green red lands. Yeah, you can respond to a counterspell with Bale and Fizzle it. Yep, this counter is a counterspell. And you draw a card also. So it's pretty awesome. So we'll not only so we draw a card, and now our Nissa can't be countered. They still do their surveil one thing. I will protect the virtue of this world. They still can't. If they have like cast down, they still can't target my stuff. I don't think I'm going to play the Llanowar off. I'm going to keep it in hand in case of... I mean, they just got rid of a Nickel Balls the Ravager, but you know, like they could have like a Ritual of Soot here. Or, yeah, Nickel Balls the Ravager. Want to discard the Llanowar off, not the Vivian or Daredevil. Yeah, so Veil of Summer. Very good in <laughs> specifically this, this matchup that our opponent's playing. It's very good there. All right, we're one to know. Deck looked really impressive there, but that seemed to be a very good matchup for us. <laughs> yeah, Cinder Vines dealt two damage, but it was going to do more damage though. 
as the game went longer. It would be really hard for our opponent to beat that. All right, we'll see how we do here against Tony Stark. Our next opponent. Ambush works pretty well with the Growth Chamber Guardian, giving it that counter also. All right, so we're playing against Nexus. This is one matchup I don't want to play against too much. We do have the four Cinder Vines in our sideboard, but that's kind of about it. Don't have any other disenchants. Um, Arcbow at my side? I can't lose a fight. I was kind of expecting a counter spell there. My, my, how you've grown. Which is why I went uh, Vivian instead of Nyssa. Maybe I just can't even afford to play around a counter spell, though. Just should slam Nissa. <laughs> Something about Tony's Dark leads me to believe you would not be a Nexus player. Nexus decks have main boarded counter spells in the past, but maybe that's a th thing of the past. Fit enough to survive. We won't answer to other guilt. I guess this didn't play around Blast Zone at all. I wasn't really considering Blast Zone. Where's Peppy? She's out in the living room. You want me to grab her? Hawkeye's asleep there on the couch. You can see him behind the table. I don't think he would mind if Puppy comes in and says hi. No, I don't have any Sarkins in here. Punish you if they catch you. 
<laughs> we will not fail. Hey, Blue Jin. All right, I'll go grab Puppy here after after this turn. Harness the elements. My, my, how you've grown. So, yep, yeah, putting all the counters on the forest, of course. Because of the blast zone. Okay, I'll be right back. Make an excellent Puppers. performance for my study. The storied past holds our future. Hey, puppy. Um All stories must end. The land fights for us. Okay, how are we doing this, puppers? We're gonna go daredevil away this comes through this fight. Ugh, so they don't have the inside anymore. Oh, I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. Big scary dragon. That puppy, we got a big spooky dragon. Hey, Janini. Every story is an opportunity for new data. The past is never forgotten. Okay. So how much mana do I have? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 
10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18. So I have 18 mana. Activate this thing four times. It's only eight damage. I have become too involved with my work. Answer all the guilds. Do the damage, do the damage. Put two counters on this growth chamber guardian. I guess both growth chamber guardians. We're fit enough to survive. We get some more growth chamber guardians. Um, untap a red land or untap a land, I guess. We'll be able to kill them next turn with this Hellkite. Okay. Hey, Matthew. Oh, that's not so good. That's not so good. That's just an increase of a whole lot of mana. All right, well, we can beat Root Snare. Yeah, that was, a, that was a definitely a good draw for them. The wreck. So now they get another Ascanta activation. Like before, they wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to activate Ascanta and cast Nexus, and now they can. All right, no Nexus. Yay, puppy, yay. No, I haven't really considered Immolation Shaman in the Chandra Tribal deck. I have not. All right, we get these Cinder Vines in here, get the Daredevils. Um... I guess Tomer's Ambush wasn't that bad. Killing Tamios is cool. I don't know. Is this going to do anything? They got like a bounce spell or whatever. Uh, I will. Yeah, I'll be streaming the competitive metagame challenge this weekend. Sure will. All right, let's try this. Hope he's always so shy. Yeah, Burning Prophet. Not a not a bad one. I like Burning Prophet more than Immolation Shaman. <laughs> Puppy's so shy here on the camera. A puppy. That's that's her name, Puppy. This is, she's my little pup. She's so fast. Probably runs 25, 30 miles an hour. I don't know. Estimate.
Now I've had Puppy for years. Uh, this is just Hawkeye's room, and the Puppy isn't usually in here, so she's like real shy whenever she's in here. She's usually not. I usually don't allow her to come in here at all, and so she's like, "I'm not supposed to be in here. What's going on?" I don't know if the if all the bright screen, if like the bright screens or anything bother. I don't know, or just she's nervous or something. She's usually really energetic, but she's real shy here. You can see Hawkeye, he's curled up behind the table there. So this is a good time for, for Puppy. Is that it? Did we just get the game one? All right, here we go. All right, well, victory. All right, Puppy, I'll go put you back. Our deck steamrolling so far. All right. All right, Puppy, you want to go back to the living room? Or do you want to stay here? What do you want to do? Go back? Okay. All right, I'm going to take the Puppy back. We'll be right back. So much dog hair everywhere now. Well, that was a cool looking hand, but not with Double Mountain. Oh god, that's what happened. It was the opponent went to the future and saw they were gonna lose, and so the last rounds so then didn't even play the game too. Gotcha. That, that's probably what happened. Grixis again. Well, definitely glad we put a land to the bottom. Yeah, I was considering putting Chandra, the, the six drop, down to the bottom, but really glad we put the land right now. Oh, looks like you're all mouth and no hands. Not the best spot for Vivian Arco Ranger. Dang, that's a good curve. I am one again. Let's go down. Your bloodline. You have no weakness I cannot exploit. Okay. So let's take these things out. 
and bring in this, this, this. The harpooners. Harpooners, harpooner seems kind of reasonable. No, we'll just go with Paradise Druid. Hmm, let's play a Harpooner. Hey, Powerhouse, good afternoon. Yeah, not our Mulligan. Our Mulligan did not beat that hand. That was a good one. the black cat. I haven't used the black cat too often. So their play is Thought Erasure. We get to activate the Growth Chamber Guardian. All right, that was not their play. All right, well, I can either... I can either Hypooner away this thing or Arcbow it away. Let's, let's get this Arcbow in play. Close your eyes, breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. With my aim and their claws, you're done. We'll just get that thing in play. Much better start for us here. They're in some trouble now. Definitely in some trouble. Um, so if I adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian first, I cannot have Vela Summer up. I guess I'm not going to adapt. This will be fun to watch. And yeah, I could have gone with just playing Phoenix, putting the counters on the Growth Chamber Guardian, have, having Veil of Summer to protect. Yeah, yeah. Veil of Summer is just so brutal. Good thing we added a bunch of them to the sideboard, too. Our opponent did see Harpooner from the, from us, so it's likely that they go move away from the Thieva Sanity plan. 
but maybe not. I'm going to I'm going to move away from cinder vines. I don't really want cinder vines. Um, which one of these do I want? Do I want Domri or Vivian? Let's play the other Vivian. Because if our opponent does have like Thief and stuff, like the Cinder Vines is really doing nothing. So on the draw here, we'll get rid of that. I think it was better against the other Grixis opponent that was a lot more defensive. This Grixis opponent's looking to be more offensive. Cool, no Thought Erasure. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Guess I shouldn't have attacked with Paradise Druid, I suppose. It's not ideal. I would not say that was an ideal play. That was the worst possible thing we could see with doing the harpooner move. It's all because I attacked with the Paradise Druid. That's attacking with the Paradise Druid just opened me up so bad here. It's really unfortunate that I attacked there with that thing. I'll learn my lesson. Get ready to meet my flames. Boom! Exploded! Ah! 
No, I like Growth Chamber Guardian a lot more than than Merfolk Branchwalker. I'm very happy with the Growth Chamber Guardians. Yeah, Fry would be a good card against Grixis. Absolutely. I think we're going to beat Grixis more times than we're going to lose to it, though. This is just one of those times we lost to it. And this loss was just because I attacked with the Paradise Druid. I am not scared of the Grixis matchup, though. I adore wading through the bones of a civilization I crush. I just had... An awesome curve against my mulligan game one, and then game three I attacked with the Paradise Druid, where that cost me the game. I think if I don't make that attack, we win that. So, don't need to like go changing up, putting more cyborg cards to the matchup. I just need to not attack with that Paradise Druid, and we would be 2-0 two two against Grixis, but 1-1. One and one. Okay, new game. Hopefully I won't throw this one away. Is it Grixis Day or something? I don't mind that. Soul tie. I'd rather face Grixis. Hmm. All right, getting all of our mana out here. So next turn, if we draw a land, we could play Nyssa and Phoenix. We did not. So... Do I even want to play Nyssa? Nissa does mean I get to play Chandra next turn, but all I need to do is draw a land for Chandra. I think it's probably better for me to play Phoenix. I definitely do not want these lands dying. So I, if I had played Nissa, I wouldn't be activating because I, I don't want these lands to... I don't want them to you know use any removal on these lands considering I only have two of them. Hmm. Trophy's annoying. Trophy means that I probably should not play Chandra. I would not mind them trophy trophying Nissa maybe they'll do that witness the ties that bind us all behold nature's true power yep Wow. How are they just not attacking with Dracu, Seth? Stop. So how how can I like make a lot of attacks and still play Chandra? I need to have six mana still. So if I if I tap the three mana play Spellbreaker, 
activate on stomping ground attack we'd have two four five six but if they block a stomping ground i would need those back This is just lethal. Right, like, all right, so they block Phoenix, they take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, this is just lethal. Okay. I guess I don't have to worry about Chandra when this is lethal. Veil Summer only gives Hexproof from blue and black. So even like if they cast the the reanimation spell, I could draw a card off Veil of Summer, but it wouldn't protect my creatures from Dracuseth. Um I don't know if I really need any of these cyborg cards. I think Lava Coil is probably my best cyborg card. I don't know what my worst is. Like, worst card main deck. I don't I don't know it, Claws. I don't I don't know. Hmm. I'll try cutting Growth Chamber Guardians for Lava Coils and a Daredevil. That's what we're going to end up doing here. Yeah, I don't know, Closet. As far as my arena collection goes, I've been playing since like, you know, like no, you know, October, November. I've been playing every day. You know, like seven hours. You know, I've been streaming like seven hours a day every day. So you'll gain gain a lot of gold and everything from that. Yes, the XP boost with 250 gems moves you up one level. That's what it does. So whatever level you're at right now, you can move up one level by doing that XP boost. So they may hit a, a nice juicy spell for us for with the Daredevil. What did they name? I, I wasn't 
I was just kind of, I was re, I was scratching my back there and I didn't see what they named, but it was probably the, the uh, reanimation spell would be my guess. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. <laughs> Stomping time. This study is over. Oh, they named Cast Down? Interesting. I don't I don't know if it's worth buying levels before they remove it, honestly. Ugh. Gross. I'm gonna love holding this grudge. That's really unfortunate. They just have another one too. Yeah, like the 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 turn five attacking with Drakey Seth every game is pretty rough. We need to draw like a Domery. Uh, and I cannot cast down Drakey Seth. No, Viv I don't think Incubation Druid would be real strong with Vivian counters. We don't have anything that's like super expensive to ramp into with Incubation Druid, and most of the time Incubation Druid will be an O2. It's not going to be that often that you put counters on Incubation Druid with Vivian. That won't happen that often. And I would rather... I'd rather have my better attackers for most of the time. Yeah, correct. I, I couldn't steal, like, I didn't have the mana to, but even if I did have the mana to, I couldn't steal Bond or Revival and cast it and, and get something from their graveyard. I can only get, I would only, like, if I daredeviled Bond or Revival, I'd only be able to um, get a creature from my graveyard. Uh how do I feel about Feather? Like, like, do I think it's competitive? It's, uh, I would say it is. I don't really enjoy playing against Feather. If that's what you mean by how do I feel about it. We have a, a strong hand here. It doesn't have a, a lot of interaction. We got like basically the ranger for our interaction. The strong uh, ramp hands. <laughs> now you can play Knife Feather on sub battle day. You can play whatever you want on sub battle day. Good card. I 
I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. That's a lot of stuff. You picked the wrong fight. Rise, my elemental friend. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to cast the, the Domri's ambush here, even though I would like to. Because attacking, you know, because that would mean not attacking with one of these things and attacking with those things. Was our best option. Good, no ritual of soot. Ritual of soot would have been a problem. Wasn't wasn't expecting it, of course. All right, three and one. I do like how fast this deck plays matches, though, also. This deck plays some pretty quick matches, and I like that. A lot of decks that I play don't. <laughs> matches take a while. So we're 3-1, and I, I think we could have probably gotten that loss if I just don't attack with the Paradise Druid. I think we could have got that one. Yeah, Nissan 3 is such a beating. It really is. Yeah, we're going to be playing our own Sultai Reanimator up next. Uh, we had a, a donation to play Sultai Reanimator, so we're going to be playing that up next. Tomorrow we have another Reanimate deck as well as a donation deck, so we're, we are going to be doing our own reanimating stuff. Oh, sorry, John. I just realized that they would just play it against you. Sorry, John. GG's there. Yeah, that attack that you missed game one. Yeah. With the Drachy Seth. Yeah, that's certainly why I won the game one. That's that's definitely true. I forgot about that. I wasn't sure how this deck would be matched up against vampires. I don't think I've ever played against vampires in playing this deck, or uh, if I have, I don't really remember it. So, at least not with like the the cyborg configuration that I have now. So I was actually wondering how how the vampire matchup would kind of go. Looks like we'll get to see here. Yeah, the next yeah sub battle stream is always the last Saturday of the month. So we're, gonna, we're doing sub battle stream once a month, last last Saturday of the month. That's what we're doing. With only having the one forest, I'd have to tap both of my mana creatures to play the Arcbow Ranger. So we're going with Phoenix first. Is this worse... Is this worth doing this minus three? I would trade my two mana creatures for these three creatures. I'd leave them with two cards with this Adanto. 
I can probably beat two cards. Let's do it. They could have Champion of Dusk. They would let them draw a whole lot of a whole lot of cards. Good pyromancer. Get out of my way. Or, you know, don't. Oh, they had Sanctum Seeker. Hope it's not too hot for you. I guess I wasn't very close to casting the Arcbow Ranger whenever I made that decision. Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Watch out, Jump. they bite. Jump. Utterly is the best way to destroy things. New Planeswalkers are awesome. Hmm. There's the champion desk. Take another two down to 11. Fit enough to survive. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. Go, emblems, go. Um, Methos, what do you mean by what mana base do you like the best for Risen Reef? Do you mean, like, what colors? Because I kind of like them all. I think Risen Reef is good with just blue-green. I think it's good with Teemer. I think you can make it good with Sultai. I think you can make Risen Reef work with all the colors. I don't know... I don't know particularly which one I like more than others. I like them all. They all have their pluses and minuses. So Coil's coming in. I think I remember playing this matchup now. Maybe with Veil of Summer. I think I remember not having Veil of Summer protect Phoenix. Yeah, I, th I think this was maybe our one loss that we had last time. Because we, we streamed this deck one other time and we went 5-1. And I, I feel like this was maybe our loss. Because I, I, think, I think I remember someone in the YouTube comments complaining about not bringing in Veil of Summer to stop to spark. I could be wrong there. That, that's vague-ish memory. So, is Veil of Summer better than any of these cards, is the question. Maybe a Nyssa? Yeah, yeah, Cinder Vines does blow up Conclave Tribunal, but I don't think that I... I don't think I can really fit, fit it in there. I don't think I'd want it over anything else. It's the kind of thing that, like, if they do have a Conclave Tribunal, then, you know, 
good job, then then you know they get one of my creatures. But I don't expect them to have just a ton of those, or you know that happened all the time. I think that basically, I think more times than not, we would draw Cindervine and it not blow something up, and it, would, it being kind of a dead card would uh, hinder us, or at least not go towards winning as much as us having all like just all the other cards that are in our deck would help us towards winning yeah we if we had worse options the thing is all of our options are you know pretty decent we don't have anything that's like we don't have any like dead cards kind of thing I'd rather just adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian, but I ki gotta kill the Soren. You lost what little trust I had. It was not the best use of my Dahmer's ambush there, but I don't think I'm supposed to just let them keep Soren. If I just sit back and, and adapt to the Growth Chamber Guardian, it's not like it really blocks Vanguard anyway, because they put a counter on the Vanguard and make it a 4-2 lifelink death touch thing. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. All right, I think they got me here. Yeah, I understand that, not wanting to, to craft Champion of Dusk right now since they're about to rotate. Definitely understand that. They didn't even play a land either, so they just have all spells. Their hand's just all gas. We can't even beat what's on the battlefield, much less more cards. Team fight tactics. Oh, I don't I don't need another addicting game right now. <laughs> don't need any time wasters. All right, so I don't want Veil of Summer. I like Domri more on the play. For sure, it's easier for us to fight and have our creature survive on the play. All right, let's give this a try. Team fight tactics, though. We'll 
Well, we'll see if we draw a red source. Uh, I want to keep the both phoenixes, so we'll get rid of one of the GCGs. You open 60 packs, then you get a single Sorn or new one mana vampire. So you're going to skip vampires. At least they made your decision easy for you. Instead of opening, you know, like one or maybe maybe two, but just like one of them. And you're like, uh, maybe should I? Just opening up zero. It's an easy decision. And yeah, there are a good amount of rares that are Ixalan that are rotating that'd be not the best to craft right now, you know, like Legion's Landing, for example. Come on, flap flaps. No. We need more flap flaps. Hmm. Awkward mana. So if I minus and kill Legion Lieutenant, I have then they get to attack my Vivian and, and kill the Vivian. You. So I'm going to tick up and put some counters on this Land of War Elf. So that if they do... My, my. So we still have something to show How for this Arcbow Ranger, even if they like have removal for Phoenix and kill the Arcbow Ranger. Is like a zoo. Fit enough to survive. Questions if I start attacking. Yeah. So I can put both the counters on the Phoenix to make it a two-turn clock. Or I put both the counters on the Lanwar Elf so that it, it blocks the Adanto Vanguard just fine. I 
One and one doesn't really accomplish a whole lot for me. It does still make it a two turn clock. Kind of. I mean, it still does, but but like the land war off being a four four just doesn't doesn't do anything. Like a four four versus a three three doesn't do any different. So um, there's there's just no difference there. This will be fun to watch. So I don't I don't think one and one really makes a lot of sense. It's one or one of the other two. I'll do it this way. Mm. I have not survived millennia to stand down now. Well, that's unfortunate. Our fiends thirst for life. They're just attacking me. That's not a good attack. Yeah, because I could just take that and kill them. I mean, even if you know they just attack the Vivian with that, I still just take it and, and kill them. They they couldn't attack with both creatures. They could they could attack with one creature, but that's it. Oh yeah, I I really really like new Vivian. The Vivian Arcbow Ranger is very very strong. Really like this card. So yeah, just a, a really good showing for our deck. You know, another four one here in ranked. Um, this is just a, a strong deck. Last time we played it, we went five one. I remember that and. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I was 3 0 th this morning playing it. Um, the Veil of Summer was awesome for us. That card was really good. We didn't get to play against Mono Blue, but we still did some cool stuff against Grixis with Harpooner. And even though, like, our 4 1 here, I could have been. I think I could have gone 5 0 if I didn't make it an attack against Grixis with the Paradise Druid and let them kill Paradise Druid, and then I got stuck with some expensive spells in my hands. It was just a bad attack. Like, at that point, I really need the Paradise Druid to stay alive. Um, I went too aggressive there. And if I don't make that attack, I think we would have been able to start playing, like, our five drops and stuff the next turn, and we just never got to play stuff. I think we could have won that. It would have, It would. It's not, like, a guaranteed win, but I, I'm confident that we could have got there. Um... Yeah, just a, a good, no-nonsense deck. It's not not uh, not doing anything tricky or anything. Just playing, as we talked about, efficient creatures, very good Planeswalkers. Like, all, all four of these Planeswalkers are all very strong. Um, we didn't really draw Dom this Domri too much, and we drew the Vivian a whole lot. And the Vivian was awesome all the time. I could see playing three Vivians, two Domries. I could see switching the numbers of those two. But this Domri is supposed to help cast like these other cards, you know. But yeah, I like I like Growth Chamber Guardian this deck a whole lot. I like it with Vivian. I like it with Domri's Ambush. Um, even though our curve's kind of high, we don't really have card advantage too much, and so Growth Chamber Guardian gives you a, a little bit of that. I like that card. You know, you you have a lot of you have a lot of other things you can be doing in the early turns and waiting for Growth Chamber Guardian also at times. Okay, if you need to replace two Phoenixes that you don't have, I would recommend uh, maybe two Hellkites or two maybe two Ripjaw Raptors. If you have those, uh, if you don't like the the new Ceratops, would work. Uh, you probably want another you you probably want creatures there. I mean, Phoenix is definitely going to be stronger than those other options, but that's just, you know, if you need to replace them because you don't have them and you don't want to craft them since it's rotating. Which that happens. All right, so really good league here for Gruul midrange. Big Chandra, is, is she worth it? Yes, I think so. You know, we have 25 lands here, and we have 11 cards that help us ramp with the Elves, the Paradise Druid, the Domri. Nissa kind of helps us ramp, but not, not a lot. So like we can we can get the big Chandra out there kind of early, and yeah, she does a lot. All all three of those abilities are nice. Um, 
it makes their control matchup a whole lot better having the Chandra and being able to plus two and stuff. And it kind of lets us focus on a lot of the other cards and especially a lot of our sideboard on other matchups and not control because we have control. Uh, we have a pretty good matchup against control anyway with like the Phoenixes and the Chandras and stuff. Yeah, I like I like big Chandra. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not so sure about best of one. Uh, with best of one, maybe maybe you want lava coils in the main deck also. I don't know exactly. Like, you know, the thing is, is I'd have to just you know maybe just try running it through a league, see see how it goes. Um, with best of one and see if there's cards that are underperforming. Like, you probably don't want Hellkite best of one. Like, maybe that's a Lava Coil, uh, for example, there. Yeah, that, that that's probably a Lava Coil. And maybe one of these Domeries. You probably also... You you honestly may be able to cut a land in best of one for how it has the hand fixing. Maybe you could, you could, you could probably get away with just 24 lands in best of one. Uh, especially with these ramp things, so maybe just cut a land for a lava coil also. Yeah. All right. Uh, very good league here. Very strong deck. Uh, if I was going to do like the metagame challenge right now, or if I had to like play a tournament, if I had to uh, play, you know, play something like that, like right now, uh, if I needed to to win a lot of matches in standard, this would be the deck I'd be playing right now. Um, so there we go. So that's Gruel Midrange. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. Uh, but that's it here for Gruel Midrange. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for another video.